Welcome to another edition of Ask GCN. Now, as you can see, I'm alone. I've broken away from the others in a bold solo move. Let's see if I can hold out all the way to the finish line. Now, first up, here is a question we've got from Ahal3823, who started cycling in November last year, has been really enjoying it, lots of health benefits, etc. but increasingly, he's losing motivation. Now, this is a question we get asked an awful lot on Ask GCN and across the board, in fact, and it is a real big issue, um, especially if you're working around a full-time job or you're studying. Motivation is massively important if, you could if you're basically to get the best out of yourself. Um, my tip is always, every now and again, give yourself a day off away from the bike, but we've got a handy little video here giving you a further five tips on how to motivate yourself. There were many occasions in the past, especially in the depths of winter, when the weather was foul and the warmth of my bed had far more appeal than the harsh outdoors, when the fact I'd actually arranged to meet a friend beforehand gave me that extra bit of motivation to crawl from my bed and onto my bike. Who would cave in first, me or him? In fact, we used to discuss it later on the ride, describing how each of us would lie in bed, waiting, hoping even, for the other to send a text calling off the ride but it never came and we always did the ride. The startling effect of commitment. Now next up we've got this question from Kamaldeep Singh on injuries. Now Kamaldeep has asked, I'd like to see a video on injury management. Over a month almost recovered with a knee injury and I'm not sure how to return back and improve. It's a very, very good question and we have a video on that exact subject right here. Take a look. First up, you need to identify the whys and wherefores of the injury itself, unless it's something plainly obvious like a post-crash trauma. Understanding why you got the injury in the first place will help your rehabilitation and also make sure that you don't suffer from the same injury in the future. Yeah, if you're coming back from something like tendonitis of the knee, there's generally a root cause, so that needs to be identified and remedied before you start training again. It could be something like a twisted shoe plate or something a little bit more complex like a twisted back. Yeah, and understanding exactly why you've got the injury can also help you psychologically. After all, being stuck at home, unable to ride the bike, can adversely affect your confidence and morale. Time now for the rapid fire round, so let's get cracking. A great one here to start off from Zach Berend. Zach has asked, what would you say would be the greatest technological advance in the history of cycling? Well, very good question. For me, it has to be the rear derailleur. And for the first time, after that invention, cyclists could, of course, change gear. It was actually came about in 1905 with a two-speed version, and then in 1925, there was a multiple-speed version, but incredibly, you couldn't use that in the Tour de France until 1937. So there you go, rear derailleur is the one for me. Now, Josh Woolley has asked, is there a place in the world that you guys haven't ridden that you'd really like to? Now, obviously, I can't answer for the rest of the chaps, but there's loads of places I still haven't ridden, but the one place I'd love to ride would be Japan. Now, back in 1990, I was picked to ride the World Championships in, in Japan. Unfortunately, I got injured and couldn't go. So I'd really like to go there and check it out. Uh, I'd also like to go to South Africa as well, because that looks absolutely amazing. Next one up here we have from Kevin Dickerson, who asks, as a fairly new cyclist, one of the hardest habits I have had to get away from is stretching before rides. How many minutes should you ride at an easy pace before being able to put a full effort into the ride? A really good question. Uh, basically looking at the issues and the importance of a good warm-up. So first and foremost, if you've always already stretched in the past, it's not something that I would dispense with. Keep on stretching, but in relation to a warm-up before a hard effort, say on a climb, a lot of it will depend on the weather and your level of fitness. But there's a basic benchmark warm-up period of time. I go for five or 10 minutes, steadily increasing the effort before you do any hard efforts. Next up uh, is this from Javi Wallis. What is the dumbest mistake you've ever made in a race? That is a good question. I don't know what Dan's or Simon's or Lasty's are, but mine is this. I actually missed the start of a stage of Torreno Adriatico because I was in the toilet. That's true. Great question. There you go. Last one here. Have you ever visited Greece for road races? And that's from Theo McHull. Uh, yeah, I rode the Tour of Greece back in 1998 and managed to get third. Very mountainous, absolutely beautiful, great food, just a beautiful country. Whew, now the rapid fire questions are out of the way. Let's just slow the tempo down a little bit. We've got a great question here from Justin Verrigan, who asked, I live in the extremely flat prairies of Canada. Most hills around here only gain between 20 and 60 meters in elevation, it's not much at all. Can you train to go up long, steep climbs using flat roads or smaller hills? Well, 
It's a very, very good question. I mean, you can't replicate long, steep climbs without riding on them, really. But there are some things you can do. Firstly, it's a bit of a stretch. You could ride on a treadmill. Some pros actually do that, although they're not readily available and not many people have got access to those. And what I used to do sometimes is to elevate my front wheel on my turbo trainer and then ride on a very big gear out of the saddle. And that does give you a little bit of replication, but it's not anywhere near like the real thing. Or you could watch this video, how to train for mountains if you don't live near any. One of the keys to climbing is being able to put out a sustained amount of power for a long period of time without going into the red. So you want to practice this even on the flatter road. So we would recommend spending quite a lot of your training time at something called sweet spot. Now, the definition of sweet spot is around about 10% below your functional threshold power. And we told you how to calculate that in one of our previous videos. Next up we have this question from Marshall Taylor who says, I'm currently racing at crit level around 21 miles an hour plus. Lots of people wear skin suits and they have maximum aerodynamic advantage. They seem to be the people who are always winning. Are they essentially buying their speed? Well, the simple answer to that question is yes, you can buy speed. You can buy deep section aero wheels. You can buy an aerodynamic frame. You can also get an aero helmet and aero kit. But a lot of that depends on how deep your pockets are, of course. But the most fundamentally important thing when it comes to barriers for speed is you on a bike and your position. So if you can get comfortable and aero, you will go faster for free. So have a look at this video, how to get more aero on your road bike, and this one should help you. The main way of becoming more aerodynamic is to lower your torso. Now, that obviously depends on how upright you are in the first place, but the principal difference between being in a relaxed position on the tops and in an aggressive position on the drops is simply by lowering your torso. So aim to have your elbows bent to 90 degrees with your forearms horizontal. And that may mean holding onto either the hoods or the drops, depending on how high you've got your handlebars. Well, that wraps up another edition of Ask GC. And thanks as ever for all of your questions. Just make sure you keep them coming, either in the comment section below, Facebook or Twitter, using the hashtag TalkBack. Now, if you fancy looking at our top five legal cheats, yes, I said legal cheats, how about clicking just up here? And as we're in the midst of the Cobble Classic season, how about clicking just down here for our top 10 facts about the Cobble Classics. And to subscribe to GCN, as ever, it's absolutely free. Please tell your mates, click somewhere in the square, there should be a globe knocking about.